Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here with a new Cinema 4D tutorial about three different ways to make a baseball bat in Cinema 4D. So, my wife and I went down to the Louisville Slugger Museum in Kentucky last winter and learned a lot about how they make actual baseball bats at this cool museum with this crazy giant bat. So I thought it'd be a fun one to talk about how to make not real baseball bats, but how to model a baseball bat using three different techniques in Cinema 4D. So if we look at this final render I got from this 3D scene. We got three different baseball bats and the models look pretty similar and we're even gonna go over some different ways to texture with different types of woods and paints and handles. And if you look in our Cinema 4D file, they're actually all made completely differently. One is using, and if I turn on a wireframe by going NG as a shortcut, one of them is made using polygonal modeling over here. One is made with a lathe of just drawing one line and another one is made with a loft and a bunch of circles. So three different ways to get to the same thing and I thought it'd be a fun way to go over lots of different modeling tips for all sorts of stuff you can do with Cinema 4D as well as go over three different ways to get to the same object. So kind of like when the chefs say we'll do something three different ways, we'll do that in 3D or maybe not like that at all. But let's just get started. So in Cinema 4D, I'm just going to make a new file and we'll start from scratch. So file new and we need a reference image and those are pretty easy to get for a baseball. So I'm going to go to my front view and I'll just click onto this viewport and press option V and that'll give me my viewport options. And what I can do is if I click the viewport and go to back and click this little period, I can get a reference image. So I'm just going to go to my reference and I got this baseball bat reference and that'll help for all of these. And you could get different types and kinds, but this one will do. And I'm going to put that in my back reference and I'm just going to turn the transparency up and I'm going to move it exactly centered and exactly on my ground plane. So I'll just offset that Y and push it up. So I have a dead centered reference image. Now this first one we're going to build using one path and a lathe. So I'm going to get my drawing tools and go to Bezier spline. And I'm just going to draw out from the center, click to make a point, click and hold to make a curve and option D will hide this while I'm drawing, which is a good little tip. And I'm just going to draw out this path and start from the bottom and just drop to the top and I can make some further adjustments in a minute once I get this first line done. So the important thing with this method is that it is centered on the ground plane and exactly falls in the middle and we're drawing out one little slice of it and then we're going to use a lathe to wrap it around. So I'm going to just drop to the top and then I'm going to use my viewport reference and pull this out and again make sure it's exactly in the center so we might need to adjust this. And then I can pan back down here and make a little bit further adjustments. So this one bowed out a bit so I can go to point mode which I'm already in and click that and I can twist these around. And I can also hold shift to just twist one of them and get a little more control over each side of these handles. And what I'm going to want to do is with this one, make sure if I pull it up, it's getting exactly there and not swooping down. So it's close, but I want to grab this one and just pull that up. So we're getting an even straight line. So it doesn't kind of bow in in the middle. And then I can just hold shift and adjust this. However, I want the handle to look and Let's pull out and again, since this photo is slightly off, I want to grab my rectangle selection and I'm going to click and just grab all of these top points and move them so it's a little wider. And then I'll zoom in on the top and I'll just grab this top one and same thing, just move it back into place. And I can grab this top one and just the right handle with the move tool in order to get that back and just bow this top one back out. And now all I got to do to get that to work is I'm going to go up here and grab a lathe and then make the spline a child of that. And when I look in my 3D view, there we go. We got one baseball bat, one down. And we can see that if we press NB to get our wireframes, it kind of got a little too blown out right here. So what we can do to fix this is we can see on our lathe, we don't have complete control over exactly where 
these intersections happen. But on the spline, we can lower the angle and that's going to add more intersections and smooth this out. And we also could change it from intermediate points from adaptive to something like natural or subdivided, probably not as well as uniform. And that's going to change the geometry. And again, this is just on the spline. So I'll go back to adaptive. And then if we want to make further adjustments, how we could do that is we'll go to our side view and we're going to turn off our lathe and we can just adjust our spline. So again, I'll go to point mode and grab my highlight selection. And then to get my handles, I'll go to move. Otherwise I can't move them and I can just twist this a little more. And then when I turn it back on, it's going to adjust this whole thing. So this would be the method for, you know, reshaping this one. If we want to make more adjustments and that's a little too wacky now. So let's just pull this one back in. So when we're texturing this, this one at least looks like a baseball bat. And what we could do to add more geometry, I'll just go back to the spline and turn the angle back up to one is on the lathe. We also can add more subdivisions if we want to get more geometry on the edges as well as the RSO part of some divisions, which we can see is going to add more down here. If we need more geometry, we also, if I just undo all those, we could drop this whole thing in a subdivision surface again, and a good little shortcut to do that rather than making it and then dropping it in is if I'm on the lathe and option click the subdivision surface, it's going to put it in there. And again, just a different way to add more geometry and I'll undo that for now. So there's one baseball bat. Let's keep moving right along. And I'll just grab that one and go back to object mode and I'll just move that out of the way for now. And that'll be my bat lathe. And now let's do another one. Let's do this, but this time let's use a loft and a bunch of circles. And this is probably my favorite way to make this because we have a lot more control as well as the polygonal modeling one will do some cool stuff too. So to do this, I'm just going to go to my drawing tools, but instead of my curves, I'm going to grab a circle and then change that plane of that circle to X Z. And now what I want to do is put this into place for each area that we need a cut or a curve. And rather than explaining, I'm just going to start making this. So I'm going to have one here for the top of my handle and I'll scale that down. And then I'm going to duplicate that and drag that down to the bottom of the handle. And just to explain what's going on, if you've seen some of my other tutorials, I use this method in a few of the other modeling ones, but we're going to grab a loft and grab both of the circles, put those in. And now it's going to connect those. So what I want to do to build this out is in between each of these, I'm going to add more to get more curves. So I'm going to duplicate this first one, push it down, scale that up. And you can see it's bowing the edges out. So this is kind of the idea with this one. So we'll just make a bunch of circles and bring them down. And the important thing with this is to note that if I have a curve and I want to straighten it out, if I have two in the same spot, it's going to snap that. So you can see that smooth that out quite a bit. So I'll just delete that. And for this one, we'll have this kind of rounded handle, but have it a little more rigid. So again, I'll just bring this one in and then on the bottom, you can see that we're just getting this big rounded area. So I'm just going to make one on the bottom by option dragging down and making sure I get the left arrow. So it goes into the loft and I'll pull this down and then just scale it all the way down. And that's going to bring this to a cap at the bottom. So what I want to do to build this one out and I'll just leave my perspective up so we can see what's happening is I'm going to duplicate this top one and then just pull this out as if we're extruding it. If we were doing this with polygonal modeling, but kind of a different method. And I'm just going to put as many as I need to get this curve. So I'll just put one here, pull this all the way to where it starts curving out a bit. So it curves in and then we'll get one on the top and it curves out a bit. And then we need to get to the barrel of the bat where they're consistent. So I'll just grab another one and let's see about where our barrel is about right here. I'll scale that one up and then make a copy of it move that to the top of the barrel. And if we zoom out, we got again, almost a whole additional baseball bat and a cap off the top. I'm going to duplicate that again. And just to show the different things we could do with these different methods, rather than this top one, let's have that cupped idea. Like I made in this baseball bat where it's kind of cutting out the top of the wood. And I think they explain what that, is for when we saw the tour of how they make baseball bats, but I don't really remember. 
So let's just make it in 3D and know that there's a purpose. So rather than cap this off with this circle, which we could do by just closing it, I'm going to just scale this top one in a bit and then make another copy, scale that one in slightly more, make another copy on the top. And with that one, I'm gonna pull it down and you can see that it's pulling the geometry down with it, even though it's at the top, so we could go all the way in, but that's not really a real baseball bat. So I'll just pull that one up and I can scale that one in a little bit. And when I make another copy and pull that down, then it's gonna pull in from those edges so I can get this kind of cupped idea and make another one. And then in between those two to kind of round it out a bit, I'll make an intermediate one so it's not as harsh of a curve. And that looks okay. We might wanna fix it up a little bit. So I'll grab these outer two and just scale them up a bit. That looks a little better. And then with these bottom two, I'll just bring those in a little more so it looks a little more realistic. And what's nice about this method is we can add more geometry and bend it around and have control over all of our intersections. And what's happening more than the lathe. So if I wanted to smooth this out a bit, I'll just find in my loft and I can even turn it off. I'll grab this one. And then if I make a copy, you can see that it straightens that out so I can pull that up a bit. And then I'll pull that one down a little and just scale it down a little. And then I can get kind of a more controlled, different curve. And if I grab these two, which is the barrel, I could scale the barrel out a bit and just make further little adjustments. And I want this barrel to be a little smoother because it's not exactly rounded. So in between those two, I'm gonna make another copy by holding Option and pull this in the middle and just scale it up just a little just so it bows out a little so it doesn't look as smooth. And you, again, you can keep making adjustments. You could turn off the loft completely and you can see it's just a bunch of circles, but it's a nice editable way to make another baseball bat. So there we got two, so two different methods, but let's make a third and talk about a completely different way to do this. So I'll call this bat loft. And now let's go over how to do this with just old school, starting with a cylinder and picking it apart, polygonal modeling. So those are both ways to use these lathe and loft nerves modeling where it's all from curves and to go over a bunch of other modeling tips and some cool stuff you can do and little tricks and things, let's go over a different way. Let's grab a cylinder up here and we'll start with this and then we'll just kind of cut our bat out of it. And maybe that's more realistic and maybe that'll mimic the more realistic idea of how they actually make these of cutting it out of wood, but we'll just cut it out of a little 3D cylinder. So probably not as realistic, but let's get started. So we have a cylinder that has some basic properties like segments, and I'm just going to scale that up with these little dots that come with these that we can see here. So I'll just scale this one to get the size, and then I'll pull this top one just to scale it up and make sure it's the size of my bat or at least close. And I'm just going to get it the correct size, and I'm gonna start with it being the size of the barrel so I'll just scale this up a bit and then to get started we're going to add on the cylinder some more segments for height because if we look now in our main view we can see that's just a cylinder with caps and no subdivisions so just to be able to get started we'll add four and that might not be exactly enough but we can add more later and that's kind of the point of what I wanted to go over is after you make this editable how you could add some more lines and curves and stuff so we got our cylinder. We want to make it editable so it's not a cylinder anymore and we can edit all of the lines, points, and polygons separately. And what we're going to do is kind of make the base of a bat and then use subdivision surface up here to round it out and go over some tips for modeling that way. So I got my cylinder. I'm going to click this button to make it editable or press C. And now it's no longer a cylinder, but I can edit it using point line or polygon mode and I can also access those by pressing V and holding and I can get all of those as well as some other quick little shortcuts and quicker ways to do stuff. So what I want to do essentially is grab each of these lines and line them up with where I'm going to bend this out similar to the last couple versions. So I'm going to 
just grab lines mode and I want to grab loops so I don't have to grab all of them. So I'm going to press U to get this menu, then L and that's going to be loops. And I can go around until I can click and then I can zoom in and press E to move. And I'm just going to line each of these up where I have my cuts. So this will be the top of the bat. And I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom is grab my bottom loop. So I'm going to again, U L and grab my loop. And when I press E and move that, it disconnects and we got a problem because it's not connected to the cap. So let's go over a quick way how to fix that. What we want to do is connect these two because there's two sets of points. So if I went to point mode, we see that there's multiple, but they're in the same spots and that's no good. But we can fix that pretty easily if we go to our rectangle selection. And then if we grab right now and click and drag, it's only going to drag what's in front of us. And again, we don't want that either. We want to turn off this only select visible elements. And then if we click and drag, we drag all of them and the center one. And what we're going to want to do is right click and go to optimize. And that's going to combine points that are within 0 0.01 centimeters or millimeters. If I click the setting icon, that are overlapping so I don't have extra points. So it's a good little tip to use that. And we'll have to do the same thing with the top in a second, but let's just stick with this. So I'll grab points in this case and click and drag. I'm just gonna move all of these up, including that one little one on the bottom. And then I'm gonna go up to the top and I'll put one at the barrel. So I'll go into lines and again, UL, I'll grab that loop and move it to the top of the barrel and this will be the top and we need a couple more. So I purposely didn't have enough so we could go over how to add more. And what we could do is we just need a couple more rings because we have this one at the barrel and we need a few more. It's not really going to work with the four that we have. Even if we move this one up to place, you can see if we start bending it, it's not going to come out right. So we need to knock on another one here to bend this out and one at the top so we can pull this out. Cause now if we go to the top, and go to point mode and pull that one up. We don't really have enough to create kind of this smooth bend. Even when we put it in subdivision surface, it's not going to come out right. So we need to knock in another line and loop. And what we can do with that is if I just click and drag nothing in lines mode, I'm going to press K to go to my knife tool. And what this will allow me to do is to make cuts. So you can see if I click and drag it cuts, but I don't want to do that. I don't just want to click and make random lines. I want to change this mode to a loop mode. And what this is going to do is now you can see when I'm moving, it's lining up a loop that will be cut. And then when I click, it makes a new line and it follows exactly the loops that it's there. So I'm going to make one there. And then I'll go down to the bottom where I need to bend this in and I'll make one here and now what i want to do is i'm going to get out of that tool by going to move and then i'm going to click my lines and again go to ul for loop i'm going to grab this one and this one here at the top of the handle so ul and shift to grab multiple and then i'll press t to scale that in and we can get out of our multiple views now and that's going to scale in my handle but you can see that this one comes with it which isn't a big deal we can just click off and get lines on our cylinder and just go UL again and grab just this one and E to move that down. Let's look at this from the side to make sure we don't go too far. And we'll just put that back into place so it gives us a nice little bend. And let's grab that bottom point and pull that out a bit just so we can get the start of an idea of how this cap comes down. So I'm going to click points click just the center one that comes with the cap and move that down. And then on the top of the bat, I'm going to need to do that same optimized thing. We can see if we grab this point, there's multiple and you never want this in modeling. So I'm going to, in my front view again, just go up to the top and I'll get my points mode, get my selection and just select all of these right click optimize. And you can see it snaps those and fixes that. And what I want to do is, I already have these selected so I can just move them up a bit and scale in and start to get kind of the rough idea of a bat. So I have my barrel at the top and it kind of bows out to my handle. And what we can do now to start smoothing this out and go over some further modeling details is in model mode, 
I have my cylinder. I want to put this in a subdivision surface, which is going to smooth it out and add more geometry to get a smooth surface. So I can click that and make it a child, or I could just be on the cylinder and option click, and it's going to skip that step. And we can see that it adds a bunch of geometry to smooth this out. If I turn this on and off, going up to this point in the center. Now that's nice and it does a good job, but we can edit this further. We can see at this bottom, it doesn't quite do what I want it. We could have that kind of knobby handle, but let's not have that. And what it's doing is smoothing in between the subdivisions that exist based on our subdivision and editor and our render is how much it's going to render it. So even if we had this at one and we render, it's going to render more of those. So if I shift R, we can see that there's more. So good to know editor and render subdivisions is for preview and final rendering. But to add more in, if we click this and turn this off, we can see that there's not enough there to have it come to a stop and then smoothly go out. It just smoothly goes in. So what we need to do is cut another subdivision. So again, I'll just go to lines mode on the cylinder, get my knife with K, and then I'm going to cut another one. And I have to make sure I don't have anything selected. Otherwise it's going to think I'm cutting a line on that line and that's not what I need to do. So knife and there we go. And now when I turn this back on, you can see that that's added more geometry, but we can further edit this with some really cool little techniques I like to use. So now if we are on our subdivision surface, we can see that it's smooth. And what this is doing, if I click my cylinder and am not in model mode, but I'm in something like lines, points, or faces, you can see that it has that loop added as it exists and the loop as it bends it out. So you can see the shell of it and how it's bending that. But what we can do is adjust the threshold of how much of that we want while we're in this mode using those same modeling tools. So I'm going to on my cylinder, press UL and I'll get my loop and you can see it lets me pick the loop and it will show me this is the one in the actual model. This is where it's being curved out to. And if I hold the period key and drag left to right, we can change that further. And I can even grab two of them. So I'll press UL again and then shift to grab two. Now I can hold period and drag left or right to smooth this out. So if I go all the way, you can see that it's filling its original object. And if I go back just a little, we can see that we're getting this nice little bevel. And that's what we usually want in modeling. And that's going to help a lot. And what we can do as we're doing this is also still grab these loops and move them and see how it adjusts. So grabbing these loops and holding period to drag left and right is a really useful little tip because we'll do the same thing on the top now is I'm going to want to press UL, grab this top loop. And again, I can bend it out as much as I need to to fill that container. And what I'm going to do is actually get this point from our center. So I'll just turn this off and I want to grab this just one point and I'll just keep that even because I don't want that to just go out to a point. And now we can see it looks a lot more like an actual baseball bat. So again, to further refine this little, I'll get my lines, press UL, Click this one, hold period, drag left and right. And you can see we don't want that far, but we can get a nice smooth one and kind of control the angle and how much it's filling out this bevel by pressing period and dragging left and right and really having a lot of control over how much the subdivision and surface is smoothing it out. So it's a really good technique to remember while you're using subdivision surface, you can still edit it further. And what you're really concerned with is not just smoothing it, but figuring out how much of this smoothing container you want it to fill and adjusting those to get the angle and bevels that you want. And then on our subdivision surface, we can still turn up and down how many subdivisions and it's going to be based on those changes that we've made. So look at that three totally different ways to make a baseball bat. If we do a command R, they all look pretty close to similar, but they're all made with different techniques and good modeling tips. And this lathe one, we could actually, if we wanted to make that in Illustrator, do the same thing of just draw one little line and wrap it around. So there's like three and a half ways to model a baseball bat. Call this subdivision surface bat. And we got our three models. And as a little bonus, let's talk about some different ways to texture these. So baseball bats are obviously not just this flat default gray. They're made of wood. And what's interesting about how they're made that I learned and tried to mimic in this file is 
there's wood and they have all these different finishes and they can dip them in different colors to get different colored wood and they have different coatings to get kind of a different specular highlight and there's lots of different little things you could do to affect the wood and we can do that in Cinema 4D too. So this file I have here, again if I just do a quick command R on this, we can see that I've done a bit of work to add some believable baseball bat textures made of different kinds of woods and finishes and a different little color handle over here. So let's go over some tips on how to do that because lighting and textures is really what makes stuff look real and modeling is awesome too, but you gotta add the lighting and textures to do anything with your work. So what I have in this scene here is just a camera and if we look at the top, just some basic lights on the left, I got my key light that's kind of orange, a darker brown light that's my fill that's lower, so 35%, and then a back rim light that's 80%, and they're all kind of tan, and then I got this reflective floor. So pretty basic stuff. I'm just gonna copy all of those into my current scene so we can focus on the textures, and I'll press V to get back to that, and I'll paste that stuff in, and it looks like I forgot my floor, so I'm gonna wanna grab that too, and drop it in, and now if I do a quick render on this, we at least have a scene set up to talk about this stuff of kind of a dramatically lit from the left side, and we have this floor with some repeating dirt texture to kind of have something to light this so we can start to worry about the textures. Because especially with these baseball bats, we look at this render I put together, depending on the coating, the specular highlight is gonna be really different and really help sell it, and that's not gonna come through unless we got some lights to hit it. So to get these wood textures, we need some sort of wood, and you, where could you find wood? And I always think it's really good to be resourceful and you know shoot some photos of your own textures and try and figure out what you could work with and what you could incorporate into your work because you could get all sorts of stuff. So what I've done is I just took some pictures of my floor because my floor is hardwood, and I was thinking about these textures, and I was like, that kind of looks like a baseball bat. So we can use these. I took this photo of my floor. You could use any hardwood. You could probably Google hardwood or you could just point the camera at your floor if you have hardwood. And what I've done is I've cut up one of them, just one little plate, and I've created different little folders in Photoshop of adjustment layers on top of that for one that's wood, one that's kind of cherry wood that's a little darker, one that's this black wood, and then one that's black and white with the color blown out to use as a bump map. So what I'm gonna do is in Cinema, let's go back to my scene and let's make the main wood one on this one with this cool little cutout on the top. So I'll grab a new texture down here by double clicking and I'll call this bat one. And I'm gonna go to color and rather than a color, I'm gonna grab an image and I'm going to go to my images. So as I mentioned, I got four textures that I'm working with. I have my first one, that's the wood, black wood, cherry wood, and then this bump map. So I'm gonna start with this basic wood and I don't need to copy it. And then for some settings, let's think about how this would really look. So a shiny baseball bat, if we drop this onto this first one, which we could do by dropping in our scene or dragging it up here, and I do a quick render, that doesn't really look real at all. It just looks like there's a piece of wood mapped onto this. So we need some more work. It's not working yet. So what we want to do is, if it does have kind of a shine on it, it will have a bit of reflection. So let's add a little bit of reflection, but not a lot. So we'll just go brightness like 25, add Fresnel, so it's kind of rounded out. And mix strength, let's go like 10. So there's barely any there. So just a little reflection. And if we bring this bat over here a bit closer, we can see that we're getting a little reflection. If we turn it off, we're not going to get that. So little details, but definitely going to help. And I'm going to add a bump so it looks like it's actual wood that has high and low points. So for that texture, I'm going to go to that same image, but saved out in black and white. And that'll be my bump. And now I'll do a shift R so we can take a look at this between that. So there's my bump, way too intense. And without it, we're just a little bit. And without my reflection, just a little bit of wood. So building this up. So there's our bump, way too intense. So let's just add that at like five and do that. Maybe 10, let's see, 15. And I oh, forgot to turn it back on, that's important. 
So again, let's just try a five and I'll remember the checkbox are important and that's good for now. That adds a little bit. And the big thing that's gonna tell, sell this is our specular highlight because that's how you can really tell that there's this varnish on it. So I'm gonna go to specular and I wanna create a thin and really tall specular. So now if I do an, another one, you can see really big difference and that's starting to look a lot more realistic and what we would expect. We could probably even go a little further and just pump this up a little more. And that's starting to look more like the real wood. And that's definitely getting there. So if you think about this and kind of take a look through that quick progress, textures and messing with little bits of specular, a little bit of bump, a little bit of reflection really helps. So we look at, we started here and that's pretty useless. And we do a little bit of work to get here, way more believable and really gonna help with this. So now if we take a look at this, the issue is it's not quite being mapped on how we would want. So what we can do is go to the tag for this. And if I render, the issue is that it's not big enough. So what we need to do is I'm gonna make it seamless and then we're gonna tile it. I'm gonna try three by three by three. And again, let's do another render. And that's definitely helping. So it's mapping this around the bat and looping it around. So we look here, we're getting this nice, wrapping texture and that's a big use of this and that's what's nice about using it as just this one little plank is we can repeat it and we're getting this more believable wood so that's a big part of the challenge so let's do a couple more let's do that black one what we could do is start with this as a base and just duplicate it it's so all command and drag to the right and this will be my black one so i'm just going to change the color to my black texture and don't need to copy and then let's drag this on to this bat. And again, we're gonna have to adjust the tag. So now if I render both of these, we can see it's pretty close and that's looking fine, but let's do some things with the tag. For this one, let's go to, if we look, it looks kind of weird and we do seamless and tile it a couple times. And the issue that we're getting with this one now is this top. It's mapping fine across this but when it gets to this top part it doesn't quite know what to do with uvm mapping so what we could do is change this from uvw sorry i said that wrong to shrink wrap and that's going to come out better so with that on let's try like four by four and what we need to do is kind of slide the v and u into place and that's one technique to kind of help line this up if we wanted to map it a little differently we could grab our tag up here and let's try like cylindrical and that's quite not working if we had it at two and maybe eight by eight definitely not working there we could try flat and that's repeating too much maybe cubic would do it if we tiled it like 0.5 by 0.5 that's helping and that's what's interesting about some of these shapes when you have this stuff is getting it to wrap and you could go further into uv textures and get really complicated but i don't want to worry about that now so i'd say shrink wrap or a cubic and turning it down to like 0.25 or 0.125 is going to help us wrap it around this top part and not have these weird seams now for this last one let's do some interesting things let's grab this subdivision surface and i want to have it be that kind of chestnut red, but I also want to have the handle painted white on that. So what we need is just one solid object. So we have this subdivision and then our cylinder in it. What I'm gonna do is drop those into a connect object up here and I can hold option to skip that. And then I'm gonna press C to make that editable. And what I have then is it's finalized all my work. So. One thing I might wanna do is duplicate that whole thing before I do that and then press C so I have a backup that I can turn off in case I ever need to get it and we'll call this bat final. And now what we're gonna do, let's duplicate our original wood and we'll just change the color to that kind of chestnut red map and we don't need to change anything else and I'm going to, rather than drag this on and make that whole tag over, I'm going to grab the tag from my loft bat by holding option and dragging up and duplicate the tag onto this bat. And then it's gonna inherit all that and I can grab this texture and hold command. And I meant to say command a minute ago if I said option instead, it's command to duplicate and copy stuff around. 
and I'm gonna swap this out and that's going to take all of my tag properties like the repeating and seamless and tiles and copy it and then I can hold command and just swap out the texture. So good shortcuts all around in this one. And then I got my bat and that looks like this nice red and that's looking good. But what I wanna do is let's go a little further. Let's talk about how we could pick this up out further and swap out just some of the polygons. So we have different textures and different parts. So what I'm gonna do is look at this from my front and I'm going to go into polygon mode and grab my selection and what I want to do is grab all of these, but we can see when I grab this bottom one and this top one, it doesn't grab those, even though I grab part of it. And even though I'm clicking and dragging on this one here in that bottom one, it's not selecting it. And that's because this tolerant selection is not on. So if I click that, it's going to allow me to select lines, points, or faces without needing to fully select them. So if I partially select a bunch of them, it's going to grab them. And what I can do is make a new material, such as make a basic white one. This is mostly fine. Let's just add a little bit of reflection with Fresnel. Just make it look interesting and we'll have it blurry. So like 10 and take the brightness down to like 10 and mix strength down to like 10. And let's make the color more just towards white and maybe bump that reflection back up. And we could tweak this more. I just want to make a point. And what we can do is now that we have just these polygons selected, if we drag this texture on to our viewport, it's going to do two things. It's making that texture part of that and it's making this selection tag with a name saying polygon selection one. And then for our texture, it's mapping this texture only to polygon selection one as it was named. So you could make your own selection tags and kind of as a rule, you don't want tons of these and if they're unnecessary, it's gonna slow things down but you can make your own and point out which polygons or you can just select them and drop it on and it's going to skip this step and do it for you. So a good, another good little tip. And then if we go into model mode and do a command R now we have this bat with our main texture. And then those polygons have this second one swapped onto it of just the second texture. And that's a good little tip and it's a good way to select and change textures for multiple parts of an object. So now if we do a render, we have three bats. We made them three different ways. They have three different types of textures and we covered lots of good little tips along the way. So I hope you enjoyed this one. This was a fun one to set up, go over some modeling techniques, texturing techniques to make some different types and styles of baseball bats. As always, if you want to check out more Cinema 4D tutorials, subscribe on YouTube and Vimeo at youtube.com slash Sean Frangella. Same thing on Vimeo. And be sure to check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash Vital, V-I-Y-T-A-L-E. If you want to request tutorials, ask questions on tutorials, and just hang out on Facebook. And as always, thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video.